presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Andy in Boulder, Colorado. Hey, Andy, what's going on, brother? Not much, Tom. How you doing? I'm great, man. Yourself? Pretty good. Hey, congratulations on the grandbaby. Yes, thank you. I know. <laughs> he just said, Tommy just sent me a picture. I mean, it's gorgeous out right now. He just was taking him out for his first walk this morning. All He's right. growling and prowling already. Yeah, I bet. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Don't take anything personally. Transform your life. When you refuse to take things personally, you avoid many upsets in your life. Your feeling of anger, jealousy, and even sadness will simply disappear if you don't take them personally. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 44, NASDAQ down 7, SP's up 3.5, gold contract up four dollars, down $4.20, trading at 1726 an ounce. We have silver down 34 cents, $20.75 an ounce, light sweet crude up $1.40, $87.93 a barrel, notes and bonds. You get the 10 year note. Down 30 ticks, trading 118.12. You get the 30 year up for almost two points, one point plus 26 ticks, trading at a price point of 120. Where are you? One, there we go. Uh, 126.27. And that 10 year right now, folks, is yielding a uh, 3.753. And King Dollar. King Dollar is up 1,025 ticks, trading 111.09. The euro is at 98. The yen is trading at a price point of 144, and the British pound is at 113 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. I know, want to know what's going on in your world. In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? Well, let's go over to SPY first. So we take a look at the SPY. What you had out here today, nice volatile market, no doubt. Bottom line, you pull back on the SPY. Uh, well, here, let, let me show you intraday first. You know, as soon as, we, as soon as we open the market up here, bottom line, you sold right down. Nothing heavy, but you get into the gap. You know, the gap from yesterday on the way up. Get, the SPY got down to a price point of that 370. Uh, you're 378 right now. Now, we take this and we're going to put this on a, just a daily, um, you know, bottom line is that now what you're going to have is that you're over this high and you're not going to, you know, yes, we just, we're at 60 million shares. Now, the 60 million folks is coming into, let me do this this way, so I want to show you how. Okay, so you got, here's ice, okay? The first line is ice, the, where, there's two of them. Now we'll do this one right here. The red line, if you, when you're watching Tiger TV, that low there, okay, the low of that bar, it was, that's a big, wide-ranging bar on the way down. That is 377.38, okay? Well, we're into that bar. We got into it by 378.54. That's 106 million shares, okay? So yesterday, what do we do? We go up into that bar with 103 million. Well, today, you're going to be over that bar, well, we're over the bar right now. The real question is where it's going to close. And you have another contraction. That's just telling you already that the buying is drying up. So we hit today the 378.540. And this is going to be um, subtle. But the bottom line is that we end up closing under the 380 mark, under the high of yesterday. That's saying that guess what? You know, you're going to basically go right back down to the low because that low is a high volume low, which is the 357.18 right now. That's in your SPY. Now, the NQs, which are the weaker indices, they almost, okay, had a chance to basically really get to a higher price, meaning not today. Because what happened is that they were lower, they were filling the gap, to get the top of the gap was 275.16, we hit 275.42. It would have been a down day with light volume because the Qs also 
the high of yesterday in the queues was 282.85, and we broke it. The problem, of course, is they're going to be the same type of setup, meaning that you're going to go to a higher high, and you get a contraction of volume. And the low, same bar, the bar that we're talking about where we came down hard and fast was September 21st. So that low there inside the queues is 283.42. Well, we went to 282.92, so we haven't even made it yet. What happens when you don't make it? Well, you want to know what the high is of yesterday. The high of yesterday was 282.85, and we got over it. So the real kicker here, if you're looking for higher price, what you're looking for is the queues to also close over 282.85. Now, that's real easy to do because we're at 282.60. You're not going to have the volume. So we'll see how this whole thing shakes out coming into the close. If we look at the gold contract, gold contracts are operating correctly. And, this, you know, this is, a, this is a deal that is probably pretty good for the bulls, too, because the gold markets are going with the broad market. That's, that's the reality, okay? When, when they go up, like when we had the bounce, all these gold stocks certainly went up a lot further than the regular, you know, uh, broad S&P stocks and NASDAQ stocks. The, the gold stocks went up 9 to about 12%. These, you know, the, the, the equities went up 3 to 4%. Anyway, to make a long story short, what you had out here is this. You had the gold market pull back to 1708 today. You did 162,000 contracts. And I believe that we did 195,000 yesterday. Let me just see this. 205,000 yesterday, which is great. So it rejected lower price. You had lighter volume. That's setting up for higher price. And of course, the whole wild card, once again, is going to be uh, the bottom line, the dollar. You know, the dollar uh, bottom line took off like a rocket ship today. You know, we'll see whether it can get any strength. Um, if we go over to the oil market, we take a look at oil. The oil stocks, no doubt, are moving out here today. Um, let's see. Give me that active contract. There we go. Okay, so we're up a dollar thirty-seven. You are trading three hundred and five thousand contracts. That's not bad contract volume. Yeah, the last swing point, uh, eighty-nine sixty-three had uh, two hundred and eight. So that's saying it wants to make that that uh, that swing. We'll see how that baby shakes out. But that is saying that it wants to go after that swing out here. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the Dow. Dow Industrial is up 95. NASDAQ is up 10. S&Ps are trading up uh, 9. Uh, gold right now uh, down 4. Uh, bottom line, did a nice uh, lot of volatility out here today. Some of the higher volume equities, and this is going to be a low volume market out here today. You have Tesla uh, down 8 bucks. We have, uh, that's the, the Twitter deals back on again. Uh, Exxon Mobil, it's got a big bit out there, up 448. We have, uh, let's see, American Airlines Flax, Occidental's up a buck 87. You got uh, Schlumberger up 263. Stay right there, folks, come right back. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, Devers Partner, Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? 
Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading up 119. We got the Nasdaq up 27. S and P's are up 14 and a half. Uh, let's go to uh, man George in West Palm Beach. George, what's going on? Hey, I'm a, a member of your newsletter. That's and a, uh, 50, 55 years ago, I used to work on C Street in Southie. Did ya? Yeah. <laughs> I love it, C go Street. To lunch, so go to lunch on, the, on Broadway. You probably went to that breakfast place, man. That breakfast place, C and Third, right? Yeah. Yeah, I forget yeah. the name of that place, man. No, I know right where you were, man. Yeah, right. Have you have you seen what what is down on C Street now? No, no. So listen to this, folks. Where, where George worked, right? This was the industrial area in South Boston, right? And this is where Gillette is too, right? And now, mm -hmm. my God, it's sick, George. Like I was just there a couple of weeks ago, and the each floor so all that industrial space is gone they get all these condos each floor is like a million bucks man it's just a mind blow what happened down there it's just amazing it's yeah that, crazy oh the million dollar i knew the free family that you said you owned i worked on one of those eight years ago okay and they're worth a fortune too and then so what's, 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 what's wild is that what they did at c street and d street down there all the buildings are gone. These are all brand new buildings, but I mean, they look kind of weird, really. But the bottom line is that, yeah, it's, well, see, it was right next to town. That's the bottom line. So what happens, folks, is yeah. that, you know, yeah. <laughs> in South Boston, we always said, oh, that's the lower end. You know, we, 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 if someone had a dime, they thought the other person only had a nickel. Oh, that's the lower end. You know? <laughs> anyway, it's, it's pretty wild, isn't it? <laughs> I got some, some shares of Apple, and I got covered calls on them for 147 coming expiring Friday. What do you think uh, Apple looks like for the yeah. Okay. So you own the stock and you sold the calls at 147, right? Yep. Okay. So when you sold the calls, how much you get for the premium? Oh, one no, 250. Okay, cool. Okay. Um and you want to keep the stock, right? Is that what's going on here? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a close call, man. But uh, you see, <laughs> Apple, well, Apple's going up on tremendously light of volume today. Okay, the the, the problem is that okay. ICE is laying out at one forty eight thirty seven. But listen, oh. even if the even if you lose yeah. the stock, I think Apple's going right back down. So I wouldn't worry about it, man. You know, you get two fifty, it means you're going to get one forty nine fifty, and I don't see that going to one forty nine fifty. One forty eight thirty seven is the number that I can get into, Judge. 
See, see this contraction today? This contraction okay. on Apple today is big. You know, yesterday we did 87 million shares. Today you're only going to do like 70. Or, uh, you have that contraction, right. and you're going into 146 million. So, you know. Okay. Yeah. I, I, you, make me, you make me feel better. Well, you know, <laughs> it's going to be all right if they take him away from you, man. You can just do it all over again again. Oh, yeah. No, no. But it would be really great yeah. if it closed at 46.95. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I know. So you think it might go to 148 and then come back down? I do. And that's, okay. that, that's going to be like, so what we have going out here today is that you get into a higher price, you get a contraction of volume. This is, the, this, is, this is not the thing you would want if you're a bull in the market right now, the way that the market is set up. The same as right. Apple, okay? So what happened with Apple, you know, Apple, if Apple stayed down today, then it might have been able to do something because the contraction of volume is going to be so dramatic. But guess what? It decided it wanted to go higher. It went over the highs. We're going to have less volume than yesterday. We're going to have less volume than it's yeah. going into. That sets up, you know, lower prices, man. Both very good, and I enjoy it, all, all your comments of, of Southie and so forth. Because I, I lived there. I worked in Chinatown and Southie, and did it yeah. Reminds you, and I, I listened to you in Boston for twenty years ago. Uh, that is so cool. So, how long have you been out of West Palm? Five years now. Nice. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You're getting a whole influx of, of uh, New Yorkers down there, aren't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot, lot, Long Island, New York City, the whole thing. Nice. Right. That's awesome, man. Well, listen, man, it's a pleasure Thank talking you. to you, man. Call again, George. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. man. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, folks, the transition uh, in uh, cities when it starts happening. Because, um, if uh, you know, for the folks that for around Boston have where he worked com compared to what it was then compared to now, like it's hard to even comprehend. It really is. It's, you, know really, you know what's really you know it's really hard to comprehend too? It, and we grew up with it and it was always the biggest thing when we were little kids, okay? So I'm talking about like 1960 now, is that because it was Gillette headquarters and Gillette headquarters used to do a, um, a big outing every summer and it was like the hottest thing to get these tickets if you got these tickets you're in heaven and it was so cool right where gillette headquarters is that's where the railroad was so what ended up happening is that you'd get out of the headquarters you get on a train the train would bring you to wherever we had the outing i think the outing was in i think it was new hampshire but anyway they, they took care of it it was it was it was a blast that's the bottom line okay so let's take a look um really a question exxon has been Accumulated on a weekly basis since March is the action the last three days telling us it's going to make a topside run. You know, Exxon's strong, man. There's no doubt about that, but it's coming up to the swing point. So the low on Exxon's 57, the high is 105. They come out with the numbers October 25th. Um, you know, these oil companies are always cool looking at the numbers because the numbers are so extraordinary. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this number, man. Okay. This number this year. 405 billion with the B, and then $12.55 to the bottom line. So this is quite a huge amount that's coming in. There's no doubt about that. And you get a wide price bar up here, so it's saying that, okay, you know, yeah, this could, this could you know, well, the next swing point's 101, so it's saying it's going to go there. With this type of bar... Where are we hit today? 99.99. Yeah, it hit that swing. Let me put this on a weekly for a second. Yeah. So, 72 million. What I would do, this is, okay, this is pretty cool. It's only Wednesday. Okay, so check this out. So what I just did here is this. I went from a daily to a weekly. And the reason I did that, I wanted to see how are you pushing into the swing on the weekly, volume-wise. And we're pushing in with good volume. So thus far, we've had 72 million shares. The last swing high had 93. So that's telling me that you're actually going to push into that with volume. So that's saying it's going to get taken out. And more than likely, you're going to test that doji that's up there at the 98 to 105. The, these dojis, they love to get retested, folks. And the way that it normally works is this, on the test. You get up there, 
And if you fail that test, get out of the way. Because all it means, and you know, you've heard me say this before, because I love trading oil stocks because they consolidate so dramatically. And this consolidation could be the 105 all the way down to the 81. They, they, oil stocks love doing large consolidations for years. Like I'm talking about two or three years that are in a pop. You know, that's that's how they, that's how they shake out. Um, let's go take a look at FIGS. So this is a. Um, they sell scrubs, uh, healthcare, apparel, lifestyle brands. The low is $6.90, the high is $43. Uh, this is a shot position that a tiger is looking at. Stay right there, folks. We'll come back. We'll go over this. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrial is up 74, NASDAQ's up 2.5, S&Ps are up 7. Let's go to Michael. Michael, what's going on? Yeah, hi. Hi there, Tom. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. Uh, I'm looking at the, the, the China large cap index iShares. Okay. Uh, it's the SMI. Uh, what's your gut feeling on the upside there? They're closed till Sunday. Let's take a look at it. So the FXI, folks, is the China Large Cap uh, Exchange Traded Fund. The low uh, out here for the year is 25. The high is 42. And as Michael mm -hmm. just said, uh, China's closed for the holidays. Um, you know, I, I can see what you're looking at that, you know, yeah, you had that, you popped, uh couple of days ago before they closed I'd be real I'd be real careful man you know I let me let me just pull it see with I couldn't I'm not quite sure the the FXI Michael is the China 50 and I was trying to actually find try find the China 50 itself so I could look at the China 50 do you know what I'm saying and I I can't find it is, 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 is um, it the Shanghai Composite? 
I'm sorry, what? Isn't the Shanghai Composite? Is that what it is? Yeah, that, that's what I thought it was. Okay, good. One uh, second, then, though. That, that's, that's, that's awesome if that's what it is. That's, uh, let me just see that. I mean, Macau opened up. Hong Kong opened up. Yeah, no, with it. Index tracks performance of... A and B shares. Well, okay. this this isn't it, by the way. Okay, I'll I'll do this one. The the FXI is the China 50. So, the Shanghai. I mean, this is everything. But anyway, let's look at the Shanghai for a second. Okay, so if we take a look at the Shanghai, yeah, take a look at the Shanghai. Don't buy it, man. <laughs> Shanghai is going down. We're at 3,024, and you get that low that's laying out here at uh, 2,800 to 2,900. So, yeah. I wouldn't be stepping into that right now. Okay. All right. I'll, okay, Thank man. You. Have a great one. Have a safe one. 877-927-6648. Let's go into the Dow Industrials. Take a look at the strength versus the weakness inside the Dow. Uh, what's moving the Dow out here? Now, watch this. This is a trip. Uh, you got United Health positive 32 points. Nike, and that's when we're going to go back to positive 18. Visa, 18. Amgen, 15. Taken away from it. You got uh, Goldman, minus 33. JP Morgan, 12. Now, let's get over and take a look at Nike. Why Nike? Because when you have days like this, folks, you want to see, so Nike's one of the leaders inside the Dow. Well, what you want to see is that does it really have, it doesn't. If you, I was, if you want, does it really have juice on the way up, okay? Or is it a counter turn bounce? Nike, bottom line, monster contraction. Now, this contraction is just huge, folks, okay? Yesterday, we did 3.8. We're at 1.59. It's, that's huge. Now, I suspect it might want to close this gap, but guess what? You know, you got to be careful out here, man. This thing's not over. We take take a look at the uh, um, and the, the Nasdaq. Uh, Illumina is up 6.6. .6. You got Marvel Technology up 3.5. Uh, Zscaler is up uh, 2.6. Taken away from a Tesla, down 3.3. Uh, DocuSign is up 2.9. And if we go over to Twitter, TWTR, what you're going to see out here, uh, bottom line, is that uh, Musk, you know, bottom line, wants to do the deal right now. And, uh, you know, I suspect uh, that will get done. It's gonna, you know, it's going to be really intriguing here, folks. So this is how this has shooken out thus far. Musk... Uh, I believe it's tomorrow is supposed to sit down uh, for basically discovery. What happens with um, anyone, this is anyone, I can tell you, but particularly folks that are running monster companies like this, there's no way they want to sit down for discovery, okay? Because what ends up happening on a, now watch how this works, on a civil suit, the way this works, is that he has to answer the questions, this is not a, it's not a criminal matter. You can't take the fifth. You can't, you have to answer the questions. I suspect that's exactly why he just said, hey, you know what, man, get this deal done. I don't want to basically get under oath on anything, okay? Because what, this is what tends to happen. And you can picture that both sides probably have the best attorneys in the whole country. And attorneys in general, the reason that they are attorneys, they want to protect their clients. And if you watch any type of, Attorney, they should never let their clients talk, ever, ever, okay? Because there's so many attorneys that are so smart that can change those words. You get the gist of it. That's what I suspect basically this came down to. This came down to there's no way he was going to go under oath because there'd be too many other deals that could come up that could be... Um, you know, that could get them in trouble, man. That's the bottom line. And if they didn't get them in trouble, they might, someone might want to go after them, and then that's more court cases, okay? But you get the gist of it. That's why I think this thing came down. It was less expensive for him, and he was going to lose the case. That's the other side of it, you know? That's how, that's how that baby was set up. And then, you know, if we, if we look at the deal here, this is so intriguing, you know, that if, if and when... The deal comes through. I can't wait to hear what the stories are after it because you can see this thing. I mean, this thing went as low as $32. And if this closes at $54.20, uh, uh, it'll be a trip. And, of course, that $4.20 happens to be, I didn't realize it, and some of the Tiger's Den was saying it yesterday. That's his favorite number, the four twenty, right? <laughs> but it's fifty four twenty. Uh, so I can, see, I can see that shake out. Let's go take a look at the 
XLF, so the banks. Let's look at these banks and see what the banks are doing because they, they certainly can basically work on spreads. Okay, so you had the XLF. This is not bad. Yeah, let me pull this back a bit. Okay, so, so look at this. This is pretty cool, actually. One second. Because the XLF has already gone from the highs of the lows of the March COVID deal. Let me see that number. 28.25. Oh, we didn't make it yet. Interesting. Okay. This is going to get interesting, though. This is, this, you're going to want to keep these financial up and really pay attention to folks. And the reason being is this, is that we just missed the high, the XLF missed trading into the highs of the lows of COVID. It would be, you know, it would be a lot cooler if it basically got into it. Right now, though, the XLF still has a high volume low at $30.12. So I suspect what we're going to see is that it's actually going to get down to the 25.25. JP Morgan, let's go look at JP Morgan, see how this is set up. Same way, yeah. Now you can see, you know, I was talking about the, so, What's happening here with the J.P. Morgan, this is how, if you're a bull, you would have liked to see the market set up. You know, yesterday you went higher with $16 million, today you're lower with 8 you know. So it's going to try to get a little higher before it goes lower. That's, that is the classic setup that you up with volume, you pull back with lighter volume. Next leg up, if you get the volume behind the move, there it is, man. It wants higher price. You don't get the volume, bottom line is that it gets weaker and weaker as it gets higher, and then all of a sudden, it falls out of bed. And as it falls out of bed, of course, okay, it goes south, and it goes south uh, fast and furious. We go take a look at the GDX. We were talk looking at the GDX yesterday. GDX came in with some volume yesterday. And this is the setup, man. So you can see yesterday, GDX came in, 34 million, you're backing down with 20 right now. This is setting, this looks like it's setting a small ABC up, which would be awesome. So it would be 2152, Okay, it's a nice one, 2460, which would get you uh, 20, 2930. What's that swing there? 27. Oh, look at this. That's a high, this is nice, man. Okay, this, and we go to a high volume low, except you're going up. Yeah, 2930. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial's up 56, Nasdaq's up 11, S&P's up 5.5. And, and uh, you know, you had, uh, so we're going to be getting Fed speakers, folks, every day out here. Uh, you had uh, Mary Daly out here today. So now she's the uh, uh, head of the San Francisco uh, Fed, president of the San Francisco Fed. Um, and uh, bottom line is, if you heard any of this, okay, she, she was on Bloomberg earlier today, this morning actually, uh, and I picked it up. Uh, and I thought one of the key things inside of the interview, this is a long interview, it's about 20, 25 minutes, happened to be the aspect uh, that uh, Mike, you know, is Mike, Mike some. The guy that was interviewed, he's a great interviewer, by the way. Uh, bottom line, he had asked her, you know, specifically saying, okay, is it the velocity of the Federal Reserve raising rates or is it going to be the longevity of when rates are higher um, that, in her feeling, would bring inflation down? And bottom line, she didn't hesitate that. The aspect was longer, higher for longer, meaning they're going to get to a point out there and they're going to basically sail along as far as they can sail along at that level. You know, so um, it's the, the whole thing. I, I suspect uh, you can see. So rates in general, bottom line, they're not necessarily a laggard, okay? Because what I feel you're going to see, well, actually, let's bring up a couple home builders for a second, because what you're going to see is, you know, the, the, the building business is a huge businessman, you know, for, that employs huge amounts of people. And, you know, well, Lenar's doesn't look that bad, actually. <laughs> it's interesting, man. So, Lenar, well, uh, let's see. Let's, let me put this on a weekly. Yeah, okay, so this still wants to test 72.48, near at 80. Yeah, and this can still test the low of 62. Yeah, so my, my point is, is this. What does happen inside of this business is that as soon as there's less building going on, folks, the bottom line, the amount of people that lose their job is astronomical because there's so many folks that are in the business. That trickles down very quickly to the housing prices, that's going to trickle down to rent. People think it's not going to trickle down to rent. That's not my take, man. You know, you don't, yeah, it comes all the way down. All of it comes down, you know. And in particular, what's going to be the real wild card here is when does the Fed turn, you know, because they're going to put a crippling on this deal. They keep claiming they're not going to get us into a recession uh, and a soft landing. I don't see, I don't see, a, I can't see a soft landing, you know, this morning, Mortgages are basically 6.75, seven and a quarter. Now that's seven and a quarter. Try to get a mortgage without getting a point or a point and a quarter on it. A point, folks, is you know one percent of the full amount of the mortgage. So you're really already into eight percent. Okay, that's telling me that if we take a look at this Fed fund rate right now, 
We're at 3.25 to 350, right? Well, no, 3 no, 3 to 3.25. That's where we're at. So, if you get they they the Fed wants to get this thing to basically 5 before the end of the year. Well, bottom line, you know, you get a point and a half, that's two more, two more meetings, that's that's 4.75. We go to 4.75, guess what? Those mortgages are going to be running out at 8.5 to 9. It's like, okay, so you're going to pay $9,000 per $100,000 that you're borrowing on a house? Yeah. You can see that the, the correlation is direct. I mean, it's direct, okay? The, the reason that one of the reasons that the houses went up so dramatically is that the rates were going down so dramatically. Because, guess, you know, it. At one point, when you start in two and a half percent, I mean, that's almost like, you know, let's just, anyway, you get the gist of it. You know, today, you're paying 7000 per versus 3000 It's a lot of money. Man. So I, I suspect the whole cycle, and it totally makes sense, by the way, too, because if you look at the market, okay, so picture, I've been in this market since uh, 1980, you know, crazy, man, right? <laughs> and... The cycles, not the real estate cycle normally, okay, is about 12 years. 12 to 14 is it. And guess what? It's like, an, you know, this, the last one started, what, 2007, 2008. Let's just say it's 2008. That 2008 to approximately 2011, you know, 2010, you kept going down. We bottomed out around 2010. Start going, basing out 2011, 12, 13. Um, I suspect the exact same thing. My take is that it's actually started, though, a year ago. Um, I'm in the camp that we actually started going down a year ago. You know, you, you, what, has, what ends up happening in the real estate business, you get quirks and you get, you know, and I'm, wah, right here. I'm sure I sold a few places that worked out very well, okay, but, you know, they were peaks, man. They were peaks. And it's, it's been softer. The last year, it was going to get softer a lot more, but we're at the spot now. This is where we're at the spot. We're at the spot now that people are going to start paying a lot more attention to it. The reason being is at the very beginning, you know, like a stock. Okay, so when we talked about the stocks, you know what a stock is worth, right? Every single day, every the close of the day, we know what it's worth, right? You don't know what housing's worth, man. And don't go by, absolutely do not go by right now what someone wants for their house. We all want whatever we want. You have to go by what did, what did the sales come in at and break it down to per square footage. What was the square footage of the house that sold and, you know, what type of, what's on the inside of it? Okay, some of them will go larger or smaller per square foot wise. But you, you can get a good indication of where the market's going and you know if you trade stocks i feel like you have a huge advantage i tell you man <laughs> uh in the housing market you just do because a couple of different things ended up happening if you've been trading for a while you know that it is what it is whatever that price is i don't care what you paid that's the price that's that's what it is i mean and so if you you take that and you use that inside of the housing market, you're going to do really well, you know, because what, what also happens, and we're going to start seeing this. Let's say there's two houses on the street. Whoever gets down faster, okay, is going to sell their house. Now, when they sell their house, let's say it's even 20 grand, they sell their house, what's going to happen with that first house? The comp's going to get down. They don't sell the house, and they say, okay, I'll get down 10 grand. Well, they, they were supposed to get down 20, because they know that that's the prices, but then people don't. So then you know what happens? Then someone else on the street sees it and says, hey, I want to get out. So they go down 20, and then this first person's still in. Then so then before they know it, what ends up happening is that they started at, let's say, 300. Then all of a sudden, they're 260, and they still don't have any sellers. Remember, hit the button. Dow. Dow Industrials right now down 5. Nasdaq's off uh, 10. S&P's down 3. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.
The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now down 52. You get the NASDAQ uh, down uh, 34. S&Ps are off 9.5. Now, if we go over to the indices, folks, you're going to have a failure out here with, on price and volume. It's subtle, but the bottom line, you have it. Uh, we take a look at the SPY. You know, we talked about this when we started the show. The SPY had a close over uh, 278 because we got to 279.46. We did 100 million shares yesterday. Now, what that is specifically, folks, is that was the high of yesterday. When you get over the high, you close under the high, you have lighter volume. Bottom line, that's saying, guess what? Can't hold higher price. That's saying wants to go lower. And that's how we're set up at this particular point in the SPY as we are in the NDX 100. Uh, so you take a look at the NDX, same type of setup. What you have with the NDX, the three Qs, we got over the, uh, that 282.85, we got to 283.81, and right now you're at uh, 281.81. And let's just go see King Dollar, because if this market does want to pull back this quick, it's going to be good old King Dollar, you know, that basically will put the grip on it. Yeah, so King Dollar right now is up 1,107 ticks. You're at 111, 172. Uh, you know what King Dollar did do? I mean, the bottom line is that it went back to its strength. You know, the, the beginning of that strength of the next leg up was 110, 132. We made it to 110,055. And we hit the 110,092 today and rejected it. So it's like, is it going to have enough juice to go back top, top side? We'll see. And if it, uh, so thus far, the high is 114,472. Now, what is out here, which we've been talking about, is 121. 
The 121 game is out here, man. I mean, you know, there's nothing in between it either. You know, when you take a look at this, you're going to see, um, you know, most times you don't stop in the middle when there's no support or no resistance. I mean, this has no resistance going all the way up to that 12500 area. So we'll, we'll see. It's going to be intriguing. Uh, and what may happen, what you're going to get out here tomorrow morning is the ADP numbers. You know, we'll see if that's going to make a difference. And, of course, the job numbers come out on Friday. Always remember, folks, the bank can claw your heart out and the bull can run you over. And thank God there's always another trade. Health, happiness, and prosperity. Have a great night, folks. Have a safe night. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off, 9 in the morning. Great show, folks. Look at him, folks.